You know that you and I, we have powers. Ooh, that's good. Tell you, look at your neighbor, look, look at them good, say you got power. Tell your other neighbor, say I got the power. Everybody know that song, got the power, yeah. In, in the Bible talks about that uh, there's something that we have. We have the power inside of us and the devil is after your power. He wants to strip you of that power. He wants to use the same power against you so you will destroy yourself. The topic of my message tonight is your mind is your power. Somebody say after me, say my mind is my power. Tell your neighbor, say your mind is your power. I'm going to read a scripture in Matthew 6, 25. Uh, and I'm going to read only, uh, it's on the screen, there's going to be only uh, one or two scriptures. But I'm going to read a little bit more. It says this, I tell you this, do not worry. Somebody say, do not worry about your life. Do not worry about what you're going to eat and drink. Do not worry about what you're going to wear. Is not life more than food? Is not body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the sky. They do not plant seeds. They do not gather grain. They do not put grain into a building to keep. Your Father in heaven feeds them. Are you not more important than the birds? Which of you can take himself a little taller by worrying? This is, this is really, really good. Why should you worry about clothes? Think how the flowers grow. They do not work or make clothes. But I tell you that Solomon in all his greatness was not dressed as well as one of these flowers. God clothes the grass in the field. It lives today and is burnt in the stove tomorrow. How much more will he give you clothes? You have so little faith. Do not worry. Do not keep saying what will we eat or what we will drink or what will we wear. The people who do not know God are looking for all these things. Your Father in heaven knows all you need all these things by seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well and again it says in verse 34 therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow worry about itself each day has enough trouble of its own this scripture has so much to say about do not worry do not worry and Jesus is saying these words so if you know if Jesus is saying something once it's important right he said it twice. It's like, all right, he's trying to make a Satan. He says three times, four times, five times. He says, do not worry. So he's trying to, trying to give you a, a, uh, a kind of like, hey, do not worry. And, and I want to take the scripture because worrying, what worrying does, it cripples your mind to think, to act, and exercise faith in the present. Worry just begins to take your ability, your creativity, your power that God has given you and it begins to break it down. How many of us, we kind of, we worry about things that never happen? Come on somebody, you know, you're like, oh, what if this happens? What if this happens? What if this, and we imagine a future that never comes to pass, yet it cripples our today and ability to be able to act as, as a son, to be able to act as a husband, to be able to act as a wife, as a daughter, as a mother, begins to cripple our today because I worry about tomorrow. Have you guys seen people who are always like stressed and worried and then you look at them and you're like, that is not a human being. What if this, what if that? And they're like walking around and they're like, oh, what if this can happen? And you look at them, and you're like, it's like this person is in his own cage and it's all done by worrying. Like many times it's like, oh, uh, what if I'm driving, somebody's going to hit me. What if, uh, you know, I go to school and I fail the test and the test never comes. You're like, oh, you know, and you're freaking out the whole night. And, you know, if something, you know, does, does happen, you begin to imagine a future that never happens. Satan is after your mind. So the first point I want you to write down is Satan is after your power. He's after your mind. That is it. So, the devil does not want your money. I want to tell you this. The devil does not want your car. You yourself sometimes don't want your car. You're like, somebody please take my car because it breaks down all the time. Satan does not want your job. You yourself does not want to wake up. Why does Satan wants to wake up in the morning and go to your job? You yourself hate it. Satan does not want your kids. Sometimes you don't even want your kids. 
You know, so, so we're like, we're like, oh, Satan is after my stuff. No, Satan is after your mind because he knows if he gets your mind, even though God will give you a blessing, you'll see that blessing as a curse. Satan knows if, if, if he can get your mind, the body that you got, you just put an extra pound and then you're like, oh God, why am I fat? Why am I so ugly? Things like that. Others are wishing to have the health that you have, yet you gain an extra pound and you hate your body. You got the little pimple on your forehead and you're like, I don't want to go outside. I can't see the people. They're going to think I'm ugly. And it's like God gave you a perfectly healthy body and you yourself are hating it. Why? Because Satan took your mind and he crippled it. We have to understand that our power is our mind. Somebody say, my power is my mind. We have to understand, so God, when in creation, God has given the creatures different powers. He comes to the lion, he gives the lion the roar and his mouth and his teeth. And that's his power. That's like, if you see a lion and he's roaring, and some people say that, his roar will paralyze you. Imagine if that lion doesn't have any teeth or cannot roar. You see him as a nice cat and you actually will have him in your house, right? Imagine if in the alligator with all the jaw strength and his teeth that he has, what if he never had that power? You would just see him as a nice little pet, right? What if the elephant, the, all the weights and, and the thing that he has in his, what if he didn't have that? He will lose his defense. He will lose his power. Same thing with the cheetah. Cheetah was created and his defense, his power was speed. Same thing as an eagle. Eagle's power is his wings. When eagle gets into the storm, his power is the wings. He just flaps his wings and he just gets out of the storm. We as humans, we as men and as women, God has given us the power in our mind. So if Satan can take your mind, he can take your power. We're like, oh, you know, Satan wants to steal my money. No, he does not steal your money. He needs to just tell you that tomorrow you might get fired or tomorrow you're not going to have enough and the money that you have you'll hate it. Satan can just give you a worry about tomorrow yet you won't be able to enjoy the blessings that you have today. If Satan can he, if Satan can't take it from you he'll make you worry about it that you even having that blessing will hate it. You will be laying in that comfortable bed of yours, such a, you know, oh man, those sheets. And you'll be crying yourself to sleep. Why? Because he made you to worry about tomorrow. The blessings that you have today, Satan will make you look at it and you'll just say, I hate the life that I have. Satan is after your mind. He wants to do everything that he can in his power to take your mind and shift it up for what you have and to put it on what you don't have, yet despising the things that God did give you. How many people in the world would trade you your bodies of the health that you have and they're sick, laying in the hospital bed and say, God, if you can only bless me with that health, I'll serve you forever. Yet sometimes we have our own bodies where we're like, God, why'd you make me like this? God's like, I've given you health. Sometimes the, the house that we live in, we're like, God, I wanted a bigger house. If people in third world countries don't have a roof to sleep under and they're praying for the blessings that you have. It's like one preacher was crying to God. I said, God, I've served you for so long and you promised to, to buy me shoes. I don't have money to buy me shoes. And God's like, okay, go to the flea market and I'll find you a person that will buy you the shoes. He goes to the flea market and he sees a person that's sitting on the, on the, on the street begging. He has no legs. And God's like, see, you're blessed. Sometimes that's what Satan tries to do with our lives. He tries to take our mind and he tries to cripple it because he knows that's the only power that we have. That's the only defense we have against Satan is our mind. It's not your mind. You can't toss money at Satan, he'll leave. He can't give him a Rolls Royce and be like, okay, I can't do anything about it. No. It's, it's your mind that he's after. Such a pressure, such a like, or like, oh wow, this is just my mind. Yeah, that's what it is. When you see a man or a woman, it's not, 
their appearance. It's not their muscle. It's not their money. It's how big and how strong is their mind. Because eventually, how strong is your mind, that's what you will have around you. That's the Bible says in Proverbs 23. That whatever man thinketh, so is he. Whatever is in your mind, sooner or later, you will have that on the outside. If in your mind you are sick, you or body will catch up to you, you'll become sick. If in your mind you are poor, sooner or later your finances will catch up to your mind. So Satan does not need to steal from you, he just needs to simple to cripple your mind. So Satan is after your power, after your mind. You know, um, my dad, for example, he's, uh, you know, he's, a, he's served God all his life, he's been a missionary in and out you know in Russia and Ukraine travel even came here to America and he served God for for whole his life and it's like man you no know, that man is dedicated you know God's gonna bless him and it came a time where one of his son begins to get on drugs and it's like you know me watching from the side it's you know that hit him so hard and he was like coming praying and asking all the relatives and everyone and the family pray and it's like at that time I saw such a clear picture where Satan was attacking his mind to a point saying you lost your son. Your son is dead. Your son will never get out on drugs. That's it. It's over. And I saw when he would come home and he would cry and he would like battle with this and it came to a point where he came to us and he said you know what I'm done with it all. I'm leaving it to God whatever happens happens I believe God is going to rescue him but I'm not going to even worry a bit about his salvation and it's like it's like I saw in his mind chains begin to break nothing changed on the outside literally nothing but in his mind I felt like chains broke with that worrying what if it's going to happen what if he's going to die what if he's going to get killed what if he's going to overdose all these things but in that mind where he said I'm giving all to God I know God is in control things in months begin to change soon after that God will begin to put and arrange things in order where today if you look at his life and how he was before you would see simple difference between black and white and I saw that when Satan begins to attack he can use those things that you care about the most to be able to cripple your mind to be able to think oh tomorrow you're gonna die so don't enjoy life today and you may be a person that is living yet you are dead on the inside you may be a person that is healthy right now but you're so worried about tomorrow that you cannot enjoy the blessings that God has given you today Satan is after your mind number two I want you to write down is this that enemy wants to kill you with your own weapon Satan knows that Anything that he has against you, he cannot use. But he wants to use your own weapon, your own power to kill you. What I mean by that? By worrying, the power that God has given us, our mind, he wants to use to inflict ourselves so we destroy ourselves. That's what worry does worry basically creates a future that never happened yet but yet it destroys us right now what if I fail in school what if I not graduate what if I lose my job when I have enough finances to feed my kids what if what if what if and we build a future around our lives never happened yet and it begins to destroy us and that's it is that's what Satan's main strategy is to come after your mind he knows this is the only power that you have. He knows that's the only strength and the weapon you have against Satan. Yet he wants to use that power against you to be able to destroy yourself. And he has to do nothing to do about it. Jesus didn't say not to worry. Remember this. But he said how to worry. When he says do not worry, it's like, okay, don't think about tomorrow. Oh, come on, you have to think about tomorrow, right? It's like, don't think about your job. All right, well, I have to wake up tomorrow, right? I have to plan my day. It's like, Jesus, come on, what are you saying? Jesus did not say, don't worry, don't worry. No, he said, how to worry. 
because you can take that same worry and defeat yourself or you can know how to put it in perspective so that's what Jesus was trying to tell the people that are around. It's like, it's not I'm telling you don't worry because even the Bible says that if you don't think for the future of your household, you're worse than unbeliever. So it's not that you don't have to think about your grades. It's not that you don't have to think about your relationship. It's not that you don't have to think about your finances, your marriage. It's not that way, but it's how to think about it. Not from the point of defeat, that oh if I'm going to get into next relationship you know they're going to cheat on me they're going to walk away no it's to be able to think that God is going to be the center of my relationship and God's going to be the one to bring us closer it's not to think that my family is going to fall apart but me and my house will serve the Lord that's how to worry about it it's not that oh tomorrow I'm going to get sick everybody's dying out of the sickness of my family I'm going to die from the same sickness no it's how to worry it's by his stripes I am healed I mean sickness comes up I will be healed from it come on put your hands together for Jesus if if I was your enemy if I was your enemy I would make you hate the blessings that God has given you that that's what Satan wants like you got to put yourself in in Satan's perspective all right he wants to make you concentrate on the things that you don't have in order for you to hate the things that you do have how many of you guys like prayed for a car you got the car once you got the car, it's like, God, I hate this car. This thing is a piece of junk. Yeah, anybody? How many of you guys prayed for a blessing, waited for the blessing for so long? Once you get the blessing, it's like, oh, this sucks. I want something better, you know? How many of you guys had that? I remember, like, I was going earlier today about through my pictures when I was, like, I don't know, when I was still in high school. And I saw pictures that I was dreaming about a car that I actually currently have now. I literally, before service, I was like going through it and I was like my dream car and it was a BMW M5. And I was like, I was like, wow, if I get it, I would be so in love. Today, I barely drive it. Every time I look at it, I'm like, I have to fill you up, man. And I, <laughs> it's a V10. So that thing freaking drinks gas. <laughs> If you don't turn off the car once you're pumping gas, you'll never leave the gas station. Check engine comes on. I'm like, how dare you, this piece of junk, you know? The things that I dreamed about, today I have. And I'm like, if I could sell you, I would sell you in the heartbeats. And I even, won't even regret it. Because that's how, that's how it is. Satan wants to make you turn your mind to what you don't have instead of the things that you do have that you despise your blessings that God has given you front today if Satan can't steal it from you if Satan can take that thing away from you he'll make you hate the things that you do have because some of you how many of you guys prayed for for a life to be free from from drugs from all these things and from addiction certain things and now God has given that life and you're like this life is boring Serving God this is terrible. Make me go to church on Wednesdays. This is terrible. Pastor always wants me to do home groups. This is a nonsense. But when you were in drugs, you're like, God, if you save me, I'll serve you forever. Why? Because that's what Satan does. He makes you to be able to see what you don't have. And yet, once you do have those things that God has given you, you despise it. You begin to hate it. You begin to worry about, oh, what if this? What if this? What if this? Yet, we cripple our ability to think, to act, and to exercise faith in the present tense. Somebody say, devil's after my power. Number three is Jesus did not tell us not to worry, but he said not to be distracted not to be distracted in the verse 33 I want to read this scripture because after he says do not worry do not worry do not worry he said it three or four four or five times in verse 33 he says but seek first the kingdom of of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you he says instead of looking here looking there what if this what if that what if that he says concentrate your own your life you're seeking first God's kingdom 
And everything else that you do worry about, oh, what if, how is money going to come? How is business? How is relationship? Will come together to you. It's not going to be like you're sitting one day and be like, boop, God gave you a relationship. Ha, that's nice. One day you're sitting there and God gave you a car. Ha, that's nice. No. Once you serve God, things will begin to come to you the mind that you had on how i'm gonna buy this car how i'm gonna pay these bills will come alongside you as you seek god's kingdom what is god's kingdom is relationship with god and serving people there's the two things that jesus said the two most important things that you should know love god and love people you know loving god is not only wednesdays not only sundays but also serving people through home groups through serving you know uh, you know doing cameras ushering kids church whatever it is it is those things seeking God's kingdom I cannot tell you how many times in my life and in, in my business my marriage and all these things that as other people dream of as I serve God God will begins to add those things in your life some people are like oh you're lucky no I'm not lucky I seek God's kingdom first it's not by a mistake that those things get added to your life it's not by a mistake that God begins to bring you blessing on the side why because as you seek him God will begin to add things to your life the things that people build for years and they go to school and colleges and try so hard God will begin to add it to you and you're like I don't know how it happens but God's like as you seek me those things will become and begin to be added to your life amen church that is the point where Jesus begins to say when he says do not worry it's not that it's not possible not to worry the the, the concern the things will come up but as, as you see God God will begin to bring people alongside you God will begin to bring favors where where you begin to be hired and you know you don't need that degree and we've seen it happen even in my in my in my sister-in-law's life I've seen it clearly you know as she's been serving the church from from her young age and how certain managers were fighting for her to hire her for a certain position I mean come on that's unheard of managers from different hospitals fighting between each other I'm gonna hire her no I'm gonna hire her I'm gonna give her more money no I'm gonna give her more money I'm like please continue you know <laughs> favor begins to go and they, they you know even one time one manager said you know you need for your degree to take this position but you know we're gonna hire you anyways we're gonna send you to college we're gonna pay for your college and we're gonna act like you already have that degree but we're gonna hire you for that I mean that's God's favor that's not just to to happens by mistake but when you first see God's kingdom those things will begin to be added to your life somebody say my mind is my power The last point I want to share with you is how to empower your mind. Write down, write that down. I just want to do practical step. How to empower your mind. There's going to be three simple steps. Watch what comes in, in your mind. Feed your mind and stretch your mind. Very simple to, very simple to, to look and to understand. Watch what comes in your mind. Feed your mind and stretch your mind. Some of us, what comes into our mind is everything. And anything garbage comes in we don't care lyrics though oh I hate my mother my father my brother I hate my school I hate my president everything we're like yeah beat is good I'll listen to it no problem sooner or later we don't understand that our mind begins to be crippled by what we hear what we take in I mean ask literally ask my wife if I hear anything negative come out from anybody I get angry like I get like I get mad because I know that negative things cripples my mind makes me weak so anytime God begins to bring me an opportunity if my mind is not strong enough to receive that opportunity I miss it I make sure that my mind begins to be fed by God's word relationship with God serving others because I know that's the only power that I have against Satan that's the only power that I have against Satan's temptation only power I have against his scheme in my life you guys have to be careful Oh, what comes in your mind rumors come around we're like oh yeah I also heard they did this rumors come around like oh yeah she did this too yeah Satan used that to cripple your mind instead of being creative you're poisoning your mind it's like we don't see it but it's like when a person goes out to work out it's like injecting poison into yourself 
like, oh, I'm going to be strong. How are you going to be strong when you're infecting poison in your mind? That's why many people are like, they're surprised. Oh, I can't believe he did this. I can't believe he shot her. Well, yeah, he'd been feeding poison, feeding anger in his mind all the time. And you're surprised he reacted like that? You're surprised they bursted out in anger. You're surprised, you know, they, they cheated. You're surprised all the things. Why? Because you've been feeding it your mind all the time. I mean, I hate movies. I literally hate movies with a sad ending. I walk out and I'm like, I want my reef. I get angry. I'm like, pointless. Because I'm like, I want a hero at the end. You know, I want somebody to win. I want them to succeed. And everybody died. I'm like, the Avengers is the most depressing depressing thing in my life that I ever saw and wasted my money I wanted a refund I wanted people to win I'm like I don't want to fight my whole life and die at the end what is this madness I know there's a second story whatever I'm not gonna buy it because for me I'm so careful what goes into my mind I I, I literally I felt if I see or I hear some people you know they say oh I can't do this I'm like we're not gonna be hanging around for too often we're not going to talk. Why? Because I'm not going to be surrounding myself with people who are going to poison my mind. This is so important for us. We see it as lightly, but that is your strength. That is your power that you have. You're not going to be as strong as how much you can lift. You're not going to be as strong in your marriage as much, you know, oh, we go out on dates. No, how much you feed your mind, that's how strong your marriage is going to be. How much you feed your mind, that's how strong your ministry will be. How much you feed your mind, that's how much God will begin to flow through you. It's what comes into your mind. Second one is what you feed your mind. If some of us, if some of us will literally give our mind 10% of what we eat, my God will be in a different place. If we just take some time to, to memorize God's word, we will never be where we're at now in our lives. If we took some time to read books, you know, on, on how to treat each other in marriage or listen to a podcast, our marriage will be heaven on earth. If we took our, some time to feed our mind on ministry, how God uses to heal the sick and all that stuff, you will be in a different place. What you put into your mind, that's what you're going to get. The quality of your thoughts will determine the quality of the life that you have. If your life sucks right now, it's all here. It's what you fed it. Don't be surprised of tomorrow that you have because this is what you put in your mind today. That's what it is. That's what it is. And Jesus was so careful, so careful to say, be careful. Don't, don't let the poison of what if, what if, what if, what if, because you're crippling today. You're not able to have the creativity. You're not able to have the peace of God to enjoy the children that you have. Other people are praying to have children, yet you have the children and you hate them. So God, please kick him out of my house before I do. So we have to understand, God gave us that power and it's in our mind. That's the only defense that you have is your mind. It's not your skill. It's not your singing. It's not your looks. It's not your friendships. We've seen it all come and go. We've seen talent being uplifted and the sooner or later that character that they couldn't maintain begin to cripple their life. Why? Because their mind was not strong enough to handle the blessings that God had come in their way. When we worry, when we begin to stress, when we give anxiety the fear, we use the same weapon that God has given us against our own self. And the last one I believe is so important is to stretch your mind you have to be around the people that stretch you you have to be around the people that challenge you if you are comfortable around the people that you are around you are not growing you're actually decaying you can never remain you can never remain in the same level remember that it's either you decay or you grow if the people that you're around if, if the books that you read if the podcast that you listen to if they do not stretch your mind, you are growing dull and you are actually decaying. Yeah, I tell you the truth, I don't like it when Pastor Lad sometimes gets in my face and says, hey, you got to do this. And I'm like, like, you know, I love you so much. <laughs> but it challenges me to be better. 
There's certain people that, that get in and begin to tell me things, you know, that I'm like, I don't like, but it stretches you. It pushes you to grow. It pushes you to go to the next level. And God's like, I'm trying to prepare you because you've been praying for so long for a blessing. I'm trying to prepare you to handle it. Some of you guys are praying for a relationship. God, give me this wife. But you don't know some of that wife will come with attitude that you know how to handle. You don't know that the man that you're going to marry might have some anger issues and you need to learn how to be patient. Because that blessing could come. But if you're not ready to maintain it, you'll lose it. I've seen so many relationships end on small little issues. Why? Because they didn't have the character enough to handle the blessing. Don't think it's going to come like gold. It's going to have some dust around it that you're going to have to wipe off. You're going to have to deal with certain things in order for you to enjoy it. But that's how it is. That's how God wants to be able to prepare us. God wants to begin to build our mind, stretch our mind. That when we go, when we're praying for thousands locally and millions globally, God wants to give us a heart that can handle thousands locally and millions globally. That means the issues that come with dealing with people. The people saying bad things, negative things about you. That you don't respond saying, oh, you guys are fake. You know, blah, blah, blah. No, that you have the character enough not to respond to those haters. You have character enough not to look at criticism and, and be always responding to every negative comment on Facebook. Oh, I'm not like that. I never said that. Who cares? Hold on. No, hold on. I'm not done yet. You guys are... Our power is our mind. We have to build it. It comes from seeking God's kingdom first and everything else will be added to you. We're talking about morning prayers. We're talking about having home groups you begin to attend home groups those are the things that seeking God's kingdom I'm telling you I'm in a place right now in my life in ministry in marriage in business in health where other people took years to get and still are working towards it but God begins to add it to my life simply because seek God's kingdom first and everything else gets added to your life you never ever lose by giving your God your full attention, your full focus. You never lose. The only thing you do is you just get blessings that God prepares you for a higher level in God. Don't ever think that giving your life to God completely, you'll lose. Don't ever think that. Sell yourself completely out to God. Say, God, my life is everything. I'm giving it all to you. I believe that you're going to take care of my finances. I'm not going to worry and I'm going to go to college. I'm not going to worry about this. I know those things will come as I serve you. I know you'll bring the connections. Even Bryson, when, when he was talking about, you know, he, he had a $50,000 uh, tuition that was paid for. For college, paid for. And you're going to be spending your next eight years paying that $50,000 off. God simply added to his life. Why? Seeking God's kingdom first. And everything else begins to be added to you. You know, some people are like, oh, I'm going to, you know, I can't, I can't be a church. You know, it's just too much of my time. No, it's not how it is. As you give God, the more you give God, the more blessings you begin to receive and the more blessings that you begin to enjoy as it comes with it. Amen, church. Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel, and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.